Uh, Madam Acting Speaker, Madam Acting Speaker, I rise in support uh, of this bill, the Tobacco in and E-Cigarettes uh, Products Tobacco Product Prohibitions Amendment Bill 2022. I note <coughs> that the bill was introduced in the Upper House by the Honourable Connie Bonaris in uh, late 2022 and acknowledge the contribution she has made to this uh, bill. Also congratulate our Minister for Health and Wellbeing for taking up the cause as well. Another work he's been doing in this area of smoking and vaping. Uh, Acting Speaker, the smoking unfortunately still remains one of the leading preventable causes of death and disease in Australia. And we know we need to be vigilant about any new forms of addiction or products which cause addiction in our society. And this bill uh, will actually uh, undertake measures to addressing illicit tobacco in South Australia. And for the purposes uh, of the record, um, Acting Speaker, <coughs> uh, illicit tobacco includes tobacco that is sold without branding, either loose, which is, I understand is called chop-chop or rolled up into cigarettes, um, not been a smoker, I'm not sure this, not familiar with these terms, uh, contraband cigarettes, which are produced by legitimate manufacturers but uh, are sold on sold without excise, etc and counterfeit cigarettes produced to appear to, like those produced by registered manufacturers. Uh, sadly, existing South Australian laws do not allow for South Australian authorised officers to enforce compliance with the Commonwealth laws around the packaging and labelling of to, to, uh, tobacco products and therefore requires them to refer those cases for possible non-compliance to the relevant Commonwealth authorities. By amending our own Act, it would enable uh, our officers to deal with those matters. Uh, the, bill also, uh, the bill will give authorised officers under the South Australian Act, including our police, extra powers and incentive to enforce the law with increased penalties with a view of addressing the legal trade. In supporting this bill, uh, the government, the state Labor government, is reaffirming its commitment to reduce smoking and ensuring better health outcomes for South Australia. In addition to supporting this, this bill, uh, Acting Speaker, the government is also uh, looking at a range of other measures to address smoking and also vaping. The government's committed to reducing tobacco and e-cigarette use and harm it, um, is outlined in the South Australian Tobacco Control Strategy, which was launched just recently. Uh, as one of the key actions in that strategy, the state, state Labor government will consult with stakeholders on how best to introduce new smoke-free and vape-free laws in outdoor public areas, particularly those which are popular amongst young people. And Mr. Acting Speaker, I raise that issue because I certainly am aware of the concern of school principals and teachers in my community, as well as students, about the use of vaping by young people. It's interesting to note that it is actually unlawful to, to actually uh, sell vaping products to uh, minors, but it's certainly taking place. And I'm also, I also get complaints from residents who see young people in school uniform go in and out of houses in various streets clearly to purchase vaping products because they actually dispose of the packaging just outside along the footpaths. So this, unfortunately, we need to do more to clamp down on the illegal sale of existing vaping products. And, this, and these measures, plus what has been proposed, hopefully will, will make clear to people that uh, uh, vaping is not a good health thing. Uh, Madam uh, act, acting Speaker, I think that, that um, uh, it's very important that we understand that the impact of vaping, and as has been mentioned by others, um, part of the public narrative is that vaping actually helps people get off smoking. Uh, that's the theory. Uh, I may, that may be true for some cases, but not overwhelmingly. But the major impact of vaping has, to increase, has, in, has seen the increase by young people take on vaping, which is actually seen as a precursor to smoking as well. Uh, we have spent decades and decades uh, in education and a whole range of economic policies to, to drive the smoking rates down. And we, we could undo this if we believe, uh, we believe that vaping is okay and we do nothing about it. Vaping is quite rife amongst young people, sadly. So we need to understand why young people are vaping and also address those, some of those social issues which lead to young people to vaping. So we need to obviously make vaping unattractive 
in the sense that people need to understand the harm it can cause them, but also make sure that uh, vaping is not allowed to be marketed in a way which makes it attractive for young people to take up. Um, and I'm really much um, in my own youth advisory panel. Uh, young people themselves have raised concerns about vaping in schools, which takes place, and that uh, uh, and vaping, to some extent, also could mask some other addictive behaviours, which young people need to address and not hide behind the vaping itself. In, uh, in terms of the new proposed laws, which have been consulted upon, um, the, the uh, new laws will ban smoking and vaping in the following outdoor areas within uh, 10 metres of children's education and childcare centres, within five metres of non-residential building entrances. Uh, I would also add, if, the, if there's an opportunity, acting speaker, that I think we should also uh, uh, ban vaping in, on footpaths in shopping strip areas. For example, my main street is a shopping street. Vaping along the footpath, you may get caught by the five metre rule, a commercial, there'll be big gaps. So what you don't want to hear people do, you want to make it quite clear that where there is a concentration of, of people and the overflow of smoke, etc., are not affected, that we should actually ban that activity like we have done with cigarettes. Uh, and so I think vaping and smoking on footpaths in those shopping strip areas should also be banned. Uh, now, how you define that, I'll leave it up to lawyers to define that, but it's a very important. Um, I think we need to regulate this uh, vaping much more strongly. I'm not a huge fan of trying to out outlaw, ban or prohibit complete products because that just generates uh, an illegal underground market, as we can see with the legal use of also those products, drugs these days. Uh, even though there are a lot of drugs are banned, they're quite prominent and prevalent in our community, so we need to do, make sure we use education about the health effects. We need to educate um, people to actually um, make sure they're not seen as a, uh, a product which is actually useful. Uh, a whole range of things we need to do uh, to make sure that we keep the rate, um, the rate down. Also, it will be banned at public hospitals and health facilities, including aged care facilities, private hospitals, and within five minutes of their boundaries. Uh, within in outdoor public swimming facilities, major sporting events and facilities, uh, at, and also within 10 metres of playing and viewing areas near organised uh, under-18 sporting events. I think that's very important to make sure that uh, our sports grounds, uh, where people, young people play um, sport, uh, vaping is not allowed because it, it, by allowing it, it actually does actually condone the activity, and we need to make it very clear that um, it's not an activity which we support. And also on beaches within 50 metres of patrol flags, etc. cetera. Um, the government's also investigating to outlaw cigarette vending machines in licensed venues and increase penalties for selling to minors with a proposal of doubling penalties for the sale of tobacco and products to children. Uh, acting Speaker, I think that uh, those proposed laws combined with the the first government funded program of its kind in Australia to offer incentives to quit, I think will make a significant contribution to reducing on, on an ongoing basis the rates of smoking and hopefully turn around, turn around the, rates, the rates of increasing vaping as well. So, uh, Acting Speaker, I think that uh, I'm glad to hear that um, across the chamber here, uh, there's uh, bipartisan support for this proposal. I assume it was bipartisan support in the Upper House, that's why it came to us from that place. And I think that uh, it is one of those health issues which we need to address, which is preventable and in a very clear way. And uh, when you compare vaping, uh, acting speaker, it's no different to where we were perhaps 50, 50 years ago with smoking, uh, with, with smoking, and that uh, uh, that uh, when it was quite trendy and a whole range of uh, attributes were given to people who smoked, we need to address those behavioural uh, characteristics and make sure those attributes are not applied to people who vape. Uh, um, you know, I've never smoked, I've been lucky, I've never taken up the habit, uh, but uh, certainly other people have, and that uh, unfortunately there are a lot of people now later in life, sadly, um, paying the price for smoking, and we don't want that for the next generation of people who vape. With those comments, <laughs> acting speaker, I would certainly support uh, this bill and, and also 
see its speedy recovery uh, through the chamber.